Hello, my dear friends. Everything is fine? Okay. Culture is a very important topic in our life today. As Socrates said that uh, an, an unexamined life is not worth living. So how are you going to examine uh, your life? You can examine it only through the parameter of culture. So culture is important very much, very much important in our uh, day to day life. <laughs> Examining also. Now the first two lectures we saw, first I gave you the introduction and then second day I gave you the, the, the uh, significant break, isn't it? That is uh, disrupting old lines of thought, then uh, replacing old ideas, then old and new together, you are, uh, you are regrouping around new themes and new premises and that is break we saw. All right, now we come to refounding. So when you say refounding of culture, what does that mean? Somebody must have founded it early. And who was that person? You know, I told you yesterday about Far Lewis and the scrutiny as a critical journal. And before that, poet critics like Coleridge, then Matthew Arnold, and after that, T.S. Eliot, they aired their views about culture, what culture, and it was, they were always thinking about high culture, high, that is art and literature, fine art, uh, music, classical uh, studies, classical literature. So in their mind, culture meant the submit of civilization, we can say. See, the, the best that is thought and said, see, the great tradition, as uh, I thought you should say. Now what happened in, in this refounding of studies, cultural studies, you should see, some three people, three working class writers, whom we saw yesterday, Raymond Williams with his Culture and Society and the Long Revolution. Secondly, we have got Richard Hogarth and his uh, book, his text uh, uh, that is about working class. Uh, working class people, studying about working class people, the, the, the uses of literacy and Thompson's book about class struggle uh, and uh, making of, so the title of the book is Making of the English Working Classes. These three texts were very important in moving forward. After this Sasura, there's a break now. Now you have to move forward. So somebody has to take the initiative and this initiative was, was taken by these three others. So what is their contribution? Their contribution ultimately ended in refounding of cultural studies. Of course there were some other historical forces simultaneously working. See that is uh, a coterminous thinking we can say. Ter coterminous means at the same time. So it's thinking at the same time, that's all co-terminus, means, understand? Now here what happens is, these three people, they took culture very seriously. They were cultural people, you can say. Culture, they were cultural, means they themselves were cultural and also their main thinking, they were at, uh, at the level of their intellectual uh, thinking, they always gave prime importance to culture and cultural studies. So they were cultural people, you can say. And then another point that we must note about these people, to them, to explain any historical transformation, it can be changes in industry, changes in democracy, changes in politics, changes in government, changes in habits, changes in way of life, everything they said is determined by culture, culture of a society or a culture of a group of people. Even Maurice and Fawkes, they were changed or transformed by culture. Then what is this culture? How important is culture? We can understand that, isn't it? So to start with, to start with the refounding, think of these three working class writers the four textbooks that they produced, the four books they wrote about it, and also how seriously they took this uh, project 
of cultural studies. That's very important for us, isn't it? So how serious it is to know we, you, their, the, their approach to social historical transformation. They said everything is based on culture. Understand? Now, what was the contribution directly made by Williams? Williams' contribution is said that uh, he settled accounts. Settling of accounts. That's what he said. What is settling of accounts means? Settling of accounts. Here there is no bank account or a property bank account, but uh, settling of account here means that settling the dispute, the cultural dispute. There was a cultural debate and there he settled it. Cultural debate. What is this cultural debate? The debate over high and low culture. That he settled once and for all. And uh, uh, the, uh, that is by Culture and Society. That book, Culture and Society, and the first part of the Long Revolution. The Long Revolution. So what did he say? How did he settle? He said, culture is a whole way of life. Culture is a whole way of life. That means art and literature is only part of what we think culture, not the whole. So far we were thinking that or the water is or promoters of high culture, they used to think that they they told us that culture means only art and literature and classics, study of classics. But here that is excluding all the other things. Art and literature, literature study of classics as far as life and the, the history of a society is concerned maybe 10%. Then 90% outside, 90% of uh, life and it, uh, it, its ramifications and its changes, its transformations, influences, then all such things connected with what we call today culture is out. So, so setting up account you must understand, till then only 10% of 10% was considered as culture, 90% outside culture. But by declaring that, Culture is a whole way of life. This 10% and 90% together, 100%, that is all what human beings do. Culture is expression of human energy. And human energy cannot be exhausted. So culture will go on expanding. That is, a traditional culture as well as new forms of culture will come up. Because each, each day, what human beings are doing, they are questioning. They are trying to be creative. They are trying something new. So what will happen? Every day almost additions will be made to the present day culture. So culture has two aspects, the known and the new. And culture is ordinary. It is in every mind and every society. With this, the account was settled. Account to here means the debate. The cultural debate came to an end. So that is a full stop for that. And then secondly, Hogarth, see, what, what did Hogarth do? He studied, he studied taking a concrete instances of working class culture. So his study was dense, dense in the sense that very seriously he took. I, uh, in, in other words, we can say thickness of history, thickness. He studied every aspect of the working class people and their culture, their values, see that, how they behave. So what happened is that uh, uh, the, he was, by his study, he was giving data, see that, to tell us that his here is very valuable and here is very uh, something, culture, something that we have to take into account. So the second contribution that you, that you can say for reforming was made by Hogarth and his study of the working class, dense and concrete study of the working class culture. That is the thing and their values. And the book you know already, the what is the title of the book? 
that is the uses of literacy. And the third is Hogarth. So it's Hogarth. The third is, as we can see, Thompson's historical reconstruction, E.P. Thompson's. E.P. Thompson's historical re reconstruction of class culture and their populations. That is during the period 1790 to 1830. 1790 to 1830, this period. That is class. This is study of class. Class culture. Class culture. So the title of the book itself is, his book is Making of the English Working Classes. That is historical it is. Contemporary also historical. Or, or we can say these three, this is, we can say, contemporary, or we can say synchronic, you know, synchronic, and this is diachronic, means through history, through time, diachronic means through, diab is through, and diabetes, diabetes, you know, diabetes means what, sweet passing through, it's a very beautiful, <laughs> a very beautiful uh, sickness, you know, sweet passing through, yes, that's it. So here what happens is, here, one is diachronic, the other is synchronic, and this one is also synchronic here. It's a present. What is what do you see now? That is it. So both this because synchronic approach and diachronic approach, or you can say contemporary and historical. These three over this and their work laid the foundation for cultural studies new beginning. Understand? So remember the important thing is that they took it very serious, study very serious, they were cultural that way and according to them to explain any historical event, any historical transformation, what you require is a study of culture because culture determines these changes that is happening in our society. Understand that? So this is step one. Then step two we can see this is step one to cultural studies refounding, refounding your culture. Step two is in the new left. You have heard of the new left, you know? The new left. So they another that's a historical force we can say. The new left. What is the new left? New left implies an old left. Then what is the old left? Old left is Stalinist communism. Joseph Stalin. Stalinist communism. What is the basis of Stalinist communism? Force. Isn't it? Force, then revolution, and uh, what we must say is uh, uh, you, you, using, at, at times you can say brute force. But the new left, they came with some, uh, what we say, some bright ideas. Like, number one, they were, th they, they were people who stood for absolutely, they said, we are against the force. We are totally against the force, use of any type of force. Secondly, they said in their, uh, their, uh, their approach was cultural capital, that is education and other opportunities should be equally shared between the rich and the poor. So they can say egalitarian in approach, egalitarian in approach. Cultural capital, that means education and connected things should be uh, exposure to, to new ideas, exposure to new literature, exposure to new ways of living, etc. This should be exposure to technology, yes, new technology. This should be shared both by the rich and the poor, means all the poor. So no force and sharing. And third, they supported women, women's liberation. There are, there are people who supported women's liberation. And uh, fourth, they said that up, they were totally against nuclear weapons. Any kinds of weapons and especially uh, nuclear weapons. So this is the thinking of the new left. That is what uh, in inverted commas uh, Hall says, Politics of intellectual work. Politics of intellectual work. Politics of intellectual work. There is politics in everywhere you, you find. No? 
politics of economy politics of education politics of uh, politics in uh, religious matters you will find isn't it religious organizations you will find politics in the college so this is politics of intellectual growth the new left the thinking of the new left is the politics of intellectual work and this politics of intellectual work also became part of culture understand that yes so that is step 2 step 3 that is cccs the founding of cccs at birmingham university and the founding the the founder president was the founder uh, chairman was richard hogart himself the founder chairman or the founder president you can say he was he was instrumental in founding this and institutionalizing the study of culture that's the point institutionalizing cccs the full form is center for contemporary cultural studies at birmingham university so at birmingham university a department was started for cultural studies and that was led by richard hogart himself and the second director is our other that is uh, uh, stuart hall as i told you from 1968 to 1979 that is about 11 years he was at the helm of the affairs see that so institution institutionalizing girls and uh, the fourth step was that is prescribing cultural studies in universities so universities program in universities program in universities not only here but in in not only in india but abroad also in foreign other universities in foreign countries also this is this is a very serious program that students take up or included in the syllabus of universities so these are the four steps by which cultural studies was reformed reformed or refounding of cultural studies the historical forces that led to the refounding of cultural studies for one the work of these three working class writers that is settling of accounts uh, that is the end of making putting an end to cultural debate uh declaring that culture is a whole way of life culture is a whole and culture is not only art, art and literature but also everything whatever you do culture is expression of human energy farming is culture then uh, circus is culture and uh, exercising is culture religion is religion is culture politics is culture economics is culture production is culture raising families is culture then uh, scavenging is culture what no why not so that is also part of culture so including every, all human activity so with this cultural debate came to an end then hogart made a dense and thick of study dense and concrete study thickness of his work you can say not in all hymns but uh, taking uh, particular incidents particular items uh, or particular cultural forms of Uh, the working class people so that gave a first and empirical the study was what we see empirical empirical study empirical what is empirical means practical not the theoretical practical so the opposite of theoretical is empirical so it's an empirical study and it gave sufficient data to find out or to take some conclusions about working class people and their culture And thirdly, as we have seen, A. P. Thompson reconstructed, reconstructed the class structure or the class struggles or during of 1790 that period, 1830. That is a historical study, so we can say historical, historical agency, historical study, and uh, that also contributed to the development or the founding of this. cultural studies and along with this you have got the new left 
the thinking of the new left or the politics of intellectual world as we can say as we have already said as a, a major contribution was made by them then institutionalizing institutionalizing cultural institution institutionalizing cultural studies by cccs at birmingham university and lastly a program in indian and other foreign universities a foreign university it must have started in foreign university and then we have it here understand clear refounding of cultural studies and what were the forces three others the new left cccs and lastly academy academy because the program of program of study in universities means academy academy takes invest in cultural studies so that was again another major step in refounding cultural studies and giving it a giving it its importance in our day to day life and also in the academic field or academic uh, studies and thinking understand and now today there is i think you are not um, boy, you are not in a hurry so we will do one more this one more point and then we will let's say good bye for the time being now the third fourth point is first we see the introduction second we saw the sasura or break then we saw refounding and the fourth point we are going to discuss is the richness of the concept the richness of the concept richness of the concept of culture concept of culture why do you mean by richness richness means it is very difficult to define there is no single unproblematic definition of culture why because it is culture is expression of human energy since it is expression of human energy there is no limit for that so they cannot limit it you can say this thing is culture you cannot say understand many interests converge on the site of this concept called culture so you cannot it is anti positivist we have seen because there is nothing you cannot definitely say anything it is just mere language game language game means you are speaking about culture but where is culture you cannot you cannot show Okay, I can say this is pen, and then I can show you this pen. But I cannot say this is culture. What is culture? You can see different forms of culture. That's okay. But you cannot see culture as such, isn't it? So it is very difficult to define it. And the positivist, it is merely language game. There is signifier and signified, but there is no referent. The third aspect of linguistic sign is missing here, and also it includes. every human activity so you cannot have a single unproblematic definition of culture and that itself is the richness of that concept the richness is difficult to define as so you think of this you think of anything see religion economics democracy politics oligarchy society corporate societies banking economy then uh, share uh, religion the we i think i told you religion politics i also have said then the entertainments seaside uh, seaside activities then the construction uh, art and literature ideas ideology or this uh, or uh, christmas deepavali radha yatra or you have bull fight jellycat you are dress fashions entertainment different uh, change in entertainment industry cultural industry oh 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 culture so therefore you cannot say what culture is and that is the richness of the concept so the richness of the concepts put in inverted commas because not it is not actually richness it is the difficulty how difficult it is to give a, a definition we give a definite idea about culture because everything is culture understand so with this point in our mind that culture what we are going to study is a very rich concept 
for the time being we'll say goodbye today hope that you enjoy my lectures if you enjoy my lectures you should tell and you should subscribe and also you can tell your friends no if it is helpful to you always also you can tell me if it is not helpful you can tell me sir it is a waste of time so you can stop this business understand <laughs> i don't mind i would welcome such uh, remarks from you but you should uh, there should be some reason why <laughs> understand okay is that all right fine you are happy yes